In this video, I'm going to explain how we can evaluate mutually exclusive projects. If you are given more than one investment project to evaluate, then you're facing two type of investments. It, it is either non-mutually exclusive or mutually exclusive kind of problem. In a non-mutually exclusive assessment, you can choose more than one project. In this case, you will rank the project based on the parameter that you learn, uh, such as NPV, rate of return, and so on, and choose the project from the best to worst. But here, in this lesson, we are going to work on mutually exclusive evaluations. In this case, in mutually exclusive assessments, we have budget constraint, so we can only choose one project. So we need to evaluate all projects and select the best project that is economically satisfactory. Let's work on an example. Assume an investor has two alternatives, project A and project B, and other opportunities exist to invest at 15% rate of return. At this 15% rate of return means uh, we can make at least 15% on the $400,000 uh, if we invest somewhere else. The $400,000 that is required for investment in project A or project B. So it means each of these two projects, project A and project B, are economically satisfactory only if each of them gives the return of higher than 15%. If they don't, they are not economically satisfactory and we can invest in the other project with the 15% the rate of return. So our, minimum, so our minimum rate of return or minimum discount rate is 15%. This is the rate that we have to compare our individual uh, assessment with. So let's calculate rate of return for these projects. So in order to evaluate and find in order to evaluate and find the best project, first we have to evaluate each, pro each project individually. Then we compare the projects that are economically satisfactory and choose the best one. So let's calculate the rate of return for project A and project B. First, we uh, write the equation for rate of return, present value of cost equals present value of income plus salvage. And we calculate rate of return for project A as 53%, which is higher than 15% minimum rate of return. Uh, so it tells us that project A is economically satisfactory. Now let's calculate rate of return for project B. We write the equation. So we can see rate of return for project B is 50%, which is higher than 15% uh, of minimum rate of return. So project B is also economically satisfactory. So because project A has higher rate of return with the same amount of investment, we can conclude that project A has to be selected for the investment. Now let's work on a slightly different uh, example. Let's assume we have the investor has $400,000 available for the investment. The investor has two alternatives, project A and project B, and other opportunities exist to invest at 15% rate of return. As you can see here, project A requires $40,000, but we have $400,000 money available for the investment. Again, first we have to evaluate the project individually, and then we compare the projects that are economically satisfactory and choose the best one. So for the project A, we write the equation to calculate the rate of return, and we calculate the rate of return uh, as 
which is higher than the 15% of minimum rate of return. So project A is economically satisfactory. Then we calculate the rate of return for project B. We write the equation and we calculate the rate of return, which is 50%. 50% is higher than minimum rate of return of 15%. So project B is also economically satisfactory. So the results show that project A has the higher rate of return than project B. It, let's see if project A is the best project for the investment or not. Using rate of return for a mutually exclusive projects can be confusing and it, it doesn't necessarily uh, uh, give us the best uh, economic choice. Remember, we had $400,000 available to investment, but Project A is using only $40,000 of that $400,000. Project A is giving us 100% return on $40,000, but Project B is giving us 50% return on the total $400,000. It means if you invest in project A, then you will have an extra $360,000 that you can only invest in the other project with 15% return. Because project A requires only $40,000, but we have $400,000 available for the investment. So the rest, which is the rest of the money, that the $360,000 can't be put in any other project other than the, the project that give the minimum rate of return of 15%. So there are two alternatives for the investment of $400,000. First one is investing the $40,000 in project A with the rate of return of 100% plus the rest plus investing the rest of $360,000 with the rate of return of 15%. Or the second alternative is investing the entire $400,000 in project B with the rate of return of 50%. So that we need to find a base to compare these two projects together. In this case, we need incremental analysis which breaks the project B into two projects one is similar to project A and the other is an incremental project uh, or B minus A so project B is equivalent to project A plus project B minus A because project A requires much less investment and the rest of the money can only be invested in the minimum rate of return of 15% In order to evaluate the project B minus A, we need to deduct the project A cash flow from the project B cash flow. So here, each year, each column cash flow equals the project B minus project A. We write the rate of return equation for incremental cash flow. Present value of cost equals present value of um, income plus present value of salvage. Present value of cost equal uh, $360,000, which is the difference between project A and project B investment. And the $160,000, which is the difference between annual income for project A and project B, and the $360,000 in year five, which is the difference between uh, salvage values. And we can use the Excel IRR function to calculate the rate of return. So incremental cash flow has the rate of return of 44.4% and it is economically satisfactory. It means project B that has rate of return of 50% is equivalent to project A with 100% rate of return plus incremental project with 44%. So we have two alternatives, 
uh, the first one is investing $40,000 at the rate of return of 100% plus investing uh, $360,000 at the minimum rate of return of 15% or investing the entire $400,000 in project B which is equivalent to investing for investing in a project similar to project A with forty with forty thousand dollars of investment at the rate of return of one hundred percent, plus investing in the in incremental uh, project which needs three hundred sixty thousand dollars and returns, uh, and and the rate of return will be forty four point four percent, and we can conclude that project B is more desirable investment although project b has a lower uh, rate of return but because it uses the entire four hundred thousand dollars it is a better project to invest when using rate of return analysis for the evaluation of mutually exclusive projects we need to keep two things in our in our mind first uh, rate of return for each individual project has to be higher than the minimum rate of return and also the rate of return on the incremental investment has to also be uh, higher than the minimum rate of return and the largest level of investment that satisfies both cr criteria is the economic choice. So it is often uh, more desirable to invest a large amount of money at the moderate rate of return rather than uh, investing a small amount of money uh, at a large uh, rate of return and then uh, beca because we need to invest the rest of the money at the minimum rate of return.